just passed my NASM CPT certification exam. So sorry for the way my hair looks right now. I wanted to get on here and share some tips that I used um, to help me pass and also things that um, I think are beneficial to know before you take your test. So I took the practice tests from the guided study um, I took the practice test and the quizzes, the domain quizzes. I took the chapter quizzes and this test is nothing like those. The way it is worded is completely different. It is confusing. Your answers are not as um, obvious as they are on any of the NASM study quizzes tests, any of that kind of stuff. So going through those, I mean, it was challenging, but you pretty much had like two you could automatically get rid of. This test, all four of your answers are going to be something that you're like, um, so study, study, study. And, uh, let's move on. There was a lot on there that I did not expect to be on there. And there were things that I studied for that weren't even on there. So obviously I can't go into detail about what is exactly on the test, but I'm going to go through and hit the highlight points from the study guide. Um, so there are things that I think and every test is going to be different. They say not everybody has the same test. I did the proctored, the online proctored from home. Um, so two important things, make sure you have your driver's license or passport, and also make sure that you have your uh, CPR card. You have to show them both of those. So make sure you have those. Um, and then I'm going to run through the study guide real quick because there's a lot of things that I thought would be on there that were not on there. And then I'll tell you the things that I think you should pay attention to. And I will link the video that I watched um, before I took mine. And yes, I used her techniques, but there was also a lot that was on there that I feel like you should know. So domain number one, um, basic applied sciences and nutritional concepts. I did not have anything on the nervous system and I was under the impression that that would be on there. So, you know know it, but it wasn't on mine. Um, Golgi tendons and muscle spindles, everybody preaches on knowing these. And yes, you should know them, but I maybe had one question. Um, the muscular system, so all the anatomy that makes up the muscles, I would definitely know the um, sarcomere and the types of the muscles, tissues, so type one, type two, um, the characteristics of those. And, um, I would also, I didn't have any questions on the local or global stabilization systems. I was under the impression they'd be on there. So I spent time on that. Um, the skeletal system did not have anything on that. Um, endocrine system. Nope. Cardiovascular system. Know your atrium, uh, your atriums, atria and your ventricles and blood flow would be good to know um yeah the your resting oxygen consumption maximum maximal oxygen consumption i would definitely know those um i didn't have anything on the respiratory muscles stroke volume cardiac output cardio exercise bioenergetics and exercise metabolism i had a few questions from those um so i would definitely pay attention to that I did not have any on the fundamental fundamentals of biomechanics, but you should always know your anatomic locations. So those are definitely good to know. I know those because I have a medical background. So um, your planes of motion, definitely know those. There's a little bit of that on there. Joint motions, very little. Um, principles of human movement science. So the foundational concepts, your eccentric, isometric, and your, e your concentric. Um, definitely know those and pretty much all of those definitions up underneath there you should know. Um, I definitely studied the top half of that page nine. Um, I would definitely know those and you should always know the OPT model. Like it's not going to have like a diagram and you have to label them, but you should know that frontwards and backwards and what each of them do. Um, principles of motor development feedback. Proprioception is huge, but it's not a big part of the test for me at least. 
macronutrients. I, y'all, like I didn't have any of this stuff on here, which was actually quite shocking to me after, um, you know, the reviews I watched and what I figured it would be on. Um, definitely know what your carbs are, what your lipids are as far as like what they do for the body. Um, and your proteins, know your, how many essential proteins there are. I'm sorry, an essential amino acids and micronutrients, didn't have anything on that. Hydration, no. <clears throat> Recommendations for the guideline of cal caloric intake and expenditure. I had maybe one question on that. So uh, I didn't have anything on that next page where it talks about portion sizes, dietary references. I didn't have anything on the next page. I didn't even have the caffeine question, y'all, which we've heard a million times is gonna be on there. I didn't have it. Um, the par Q was a huge part of my exam. Know your objective, your subjective, um, what those two are, what qualifies for each one. Know what is on a par Q. Know when you would need to um, refer someone to a doctor. Um, didn't have chronic conditions. Didn't have, uh, maybe had a, one question on the cardio respiratory assessments. Know your zones, your heart rate zones, those one, two, and three. Know your percentages for those heart rate zones. Um, know like your blood pressure, uh, where you're supposed to take a pulse at. And the next part is the postural assessment. Know this front to back, side to side, front to back. Just know it. Um, the way I learned it is I got this from the video I'm going to link below me. And that was literally by writing them out. Like I would write out postural distortion pattern and pronation distortion, uh, lower cross, upper cross. I had acronyms that I had for the overactive and the underactive. Um, and then I had that for each of those. And then I would just write out what the muscles were. And I studied this so hard. Um, literally would just write it out. I also, what I did was I recorded my voice in my voice memos. Um, reading out the what the distortion or like what the pattern was and or the assessment was and then the acronym and what muscles were up underneath that so that's great for if you commute to work or anywhere else I listened to that on the way to and home from work um, and just repetition 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 so I did that with the um, the static postural assessment so whenever you're checking for all those three um, I also did it for the overhead squat assessment, which you should definitely know that as well. And also the push pull assessment and the single leg assessment. Um, I, it's, it's hard. There is a lot to know. And those are the things that I would focus on most. Um, it's a huge chunk. It's very important to know which ones are, um, overactive and underactive and which ones you need to stretch, which ones you need to strengthen, stuff like that. So definitely know those. Um, I'll go ahead and show you, even though this is not right here in the section, I'll show you my overhead squat assessment. Same thing. I didn't draw up little stick man, but it's got overhead squat assessment, excessive forward lean, low back arching, arms fall forward, feet turn out, knees move in, the overactive acronym, underactive acronym, and the muscles that are in each of those. So I used that. Um, the pushing and pulling assessment, same thing. Drew my little stick man, what he looks like. So we've got low back arching, shoulder elevation, head protrudes forward. I've got the overactive and the underactive. Same thing, same format. That was the easiest way for me um, to learn those, okay? So moving on in the study guide, um, I expected to have a bunch of obesity questions and skin fold, circum, all those were not even on mine. Um, performance assessments, you should definitely know those, like the Davies test, shark skill test. Um, all of those you need to be aware of. We just went over the overhead squat assessment, single leg squat assessment, pushing and pulling. Um, I would, I didn't have gait. I didn't even study gait assessment. So, um, considerations for special populations. I was under the impression that there'd be a lot of those on there. Know them, be aware of them. Um, yeah. Key concepts of prof that professionals do not do, I didn't expect that to be on. I mean, I kind of expected that to be on there because they're going to want to make sure that we are not doing things we're not supposed to, but I didn't even look at that. So I would definitely be aware of the code of conduct, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Does domain three flexibility training methods know the integrated flexibility continuum? Um, which phases fall into each one? I would know your key concepts. All those definitions, I would definitely know. Um, the resistance training systems, the key concepts, those are if you've already been into fitness, which hopefully if you're becoming a certified personal trainer, you have been. Um, but those are all things that most of us already know, but I would definitely know all of those key concepts. Um, and then resistance training methods. So those are pretty much going to be your um, exercises, what exercises fall underneath each phase and which type of exercise. So like your resistance, your core, all that kind of stuff. Know which kind of exercises are for each category. Um, cardio respiratory training methods. I had very little on that, but that's kind of like I said, know your heart rate zones. Um, core training, didn't have anything on that. Didn't even have bracing, none of that on there. Um, balance exercises. Yeah. Proprioceptive, I feel like you should know that anyways because if a client can't perform something, we need to know how to change it for them because that's what we're here for. Um, so I study those. I definitely would know those. Plyometric training methods, I would know that. Definitely memorize your eccentric, concentric. Um, know all your exercises, like I said, underneath the core, the balance, the plyometric. Um, know your SAQ training methods. Um, like I said, on page 33, Exercise progression and regression, we should always know those. I uh, didn't have anything on general adaptation syndrome. Principle of specificity, I would definitely know those. Um, principle of overload, I would know. Um, periodization concepts, didn't even have that on mine. Acute variables, I didn't have much, but this was another chart that I made um, that I memorized. And that was based upon what I told, what, what I was told by watching other videos would be on this test. And I think it's very important to know. I had a few questions maybe, but this is what I did. So in the study guide and in the book, it has it by phase. And for me, that was really hard to understand because I couldn't see which, um, like how it compared to the other phases. So I would do a chart for each. So like resistance, I did a resistance chart and I did phases one through five. And I went across and did each each set, or not each set, that's a bad word to use. I did each category. So I did reps, sets, tempo, intensity, rest, frequency, duration, and exercise. And that's what I did for every single category. So your resistance, your core, your balance, your plyometrics, I did that for all of those. Um, and that was very helpful. And I studied that in repetition. I went through and I wrote it all out over and over and over again. Um, so that helps me on that. I'll flip through those real quick. <clears throat> the fit principle didn't have that on there. Didn't have modality risk and rewards. Nothing about apps or social media. Program design, yes, I would definitely know those, um, especially like hypertension, what to change, how to, um, you know, like what they need to be doing. And also, let's see, I didn't have any on pregnancy or osteoporosis. I thought those would be on there. Know your warm ups, your cool downs, the benefits of each, why we need those. Um, feedback, eh, that's kind of a common sense type thing, I guess. Um, Code of conduct, know that. Know your spotting techniques. I did not um, have any clue that that would be on there as far as what I had seen would be on the test. So those were, there were a few questions on spotting techniques and you know, all that kind of stuff that I wasn't aware of. So make sure you know those. Um, verbal cues, I don't even know where this is at in this study guide. Verbal cues was huge on my test. Um, yes, I was kind of, I saw the video I watched, like I said, that I'm gonna link below, went over verbal cues being on there. She didn't know they were gonna be on there either. So I made sure I was at least aware of what verbal cues were, but I'm telling you, they honed in on those verbal cues and like the way they worded it was extremely difficult. So know your verbal cues. Um, domain five, know your SMART goals. I mean, we should know that anyways, cause we should be making goals based upon that. Um, Key concepts, know your behavior change strategies, know, you know, the order that they come in and your modification techniques as far as like the, um, the 
support, like how you coach or like what you say to people and like how ways that you can change things. Know that. And last but not least, domain six, once again, code of conduct, um, your four P's of marketing, know the um, CEUs, two for every two years, and that we keep records of clients for four years. And I think that's pretty much it from the study guide. So last but not least, there were two things that I did that I didn't have guidance from from anybody else, but these were things that worked for me and it was beneficial on my test um, because I knew I had to know the um, flexibility continuum. I wrote it out in a chart that made sense to me. So first we did the corrective, active, and functional flexibility and I wrote the phases next to each one and then up underneath that I wrote how you per, how you um, do those actual exercises so like static is under corrective active is active isolated and functional is dynamic um, stretching and then I wrote examples of each and then SMR is on all of those so that helped me as well for the test I studied that quite a bit and then muscles as movers um, I wasn't aware of this prior to but it's something that I thought was going to be necessary and this is in the book I just took it from one of the tables um, I'll have to link it below uh, so I wrote muscles as movers I put an agonist synergist uh, stabilizer and antagonist at the top and pretty much what they mean prime mover assist stabilizer oppose and then for each exercise like your chest press your overhead press your what even is that your row and your squat I wrote which one was the agonist synergist stabilizer and antagonist for each one and so I studied those to know which muscle was which for each exercise so hopefully that was helpful for you um, the test is very hard y'all like I expected it to be hard but it was so much harder than I have a degree in radiology so x-ray and CAT scan and I had to take registrations for both of those and this test was harder than those so it is hard it is doable um, study 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 I cannot recommend like literally I came home and studied after work every day I studied on my lunch break um, there are some tools that I used to study, which was Brainscape, Get Brainscape. It is a fantastic flashcard system that um, you go through and you can study them, but it's based on how well you know the card. So you rank it from one to five after you read that card of how well you knew it. If you mark it a one, you're gonna be asked more frequently. If you mark it a five, it's gonna come kind of further out in the deck of cards. So you're not sitting there studying things that you already know. Um, I highly recommend it. They do a month program, a semester and a year program, I think. I just did it for the month um, and it was so beneficial. So, so beneficial. So use Brainscape. I will put a link below as well. Um, I also use, let me see, I have, I just think apps are friendly. So I use Brainscape um, and actually that was pretty much it. Brainscape poke a muscle which I did not have any muscles I had to like go and click and say this is this muscle but to be more aware of like where your muscles are in relation to other muscles that was very good to know so poke a muscle brainscape I'm gonna link the other um, two videos I used underneath mine and I hope that this helps you prepare for your test um, like I said it's very doable it's just hard so study make sure you know things that I want to over front to back um, and yeah good luck